Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, working a specialist in Marashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. In the previous presentation, I discussed the changes in chorioretinal contour and changes in retinal thickness. However, this presentation is the part two of the pathological changes in OCT, which I will discuss in a retinal tissue structure changes along with common OCT biomarkers which affect visual prognosis and partial and full thickness retinal tissue defects. With studying OCT cross-section, it is imperative to rule out vitromacular interface abnormalities, such as vitromacular traction VMT, where vitreous is detached perifoveal but persistent central posterior cortical hyaloid adhesion causing anterior posterior traction. This cross-section of VMT shows perifoveal posterior cortical hyaloid detachment with central adhesion of the posterior cortical hyaloid causing anterior posterior oblique traction inducing increased retinal thickness and cystic formation along with disruption of the ellipsoid zone. In contrast, the vitromacular abnormality may appear as an epiretinal membrane that will feature a hyperreflective membrane causing tangential traction disrupting in retinal tissues. This cross section shows the epiretinal membrane appears as a hyperreflective membrane causing corrugated inner retinal layers forming pegs along with intraretinal cystic formation and disruption of the ellipsoid zone and increasing of retinal thickness. Intraretinal cavitation may appear as intraretinal cystic changes without an increase in retinal thickness. Intraretinal cavitation is not formed due to intraretinal tissue fluid accumulation. Instead, cavitation are formed due to degenerative processes such as in macular telangiectasia type 2 or age-related macular degeneration. This OCT cross-section shows intraretinal cavitation with normal retinal thickness due to macular telangiectasia type 2. One of the biomarkers of inner retinal tissue changes which affect visual acuity is the disorganization of inner retinal layers which features a loss of boundaries between the inner retinal layers such as the outer plexiform layer with inner nuclear layer, inner plexiform layer and ganglion cell layer. Disorganization of inner retinal layer can affect the visual uh, outcome in patients with diabetic macular edema, macular edema related to vein occlusion, uveitic cystoid macular edema, and epiretinal membrane. Therefore, when a patient has a long-term inner retinal tissue structure changes, such as cystoid macular edema, the patient will suffer some degree of visual impairment due to the disorganization of the inner retinal layers. This is an example of central diabetic macular edema presented with intraretinal cysts disrupting the boundaries between the inner retinal layers. The second cross-section shows resolved edema after treatment but shows poor to no visible boundaries between inner retinal layers. The loss or disruption of the external limiting membrane or an ellipsoid zone can cause permanent visual loss and it is an independent visual prognostic factor from the disorganization of the inner retinal layer. This cross-section shows diabetic macular edema with intraretinal cystic changes and disorganization of the inner retinal layer and loss of the central external limiting membrane and ellipsoid zone. Therefore, this case may improve anatomically after treatment, but the improvement of vision is less likely. As intraretinal cysts enlarge in size and coalesce with or without vitromacular traction, evulsion of inner retinal tissue may occur. Evulsion of the cystic roof will cause lamellar hole leaving the retinal surface with a lamellar defect of inner retinal tissues, 
including the outer nuclear layer, with relatively intact ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane, with the formation of the cleft between inner and outer retinal tissue along with cystic formation. In contrast, full thickness defects will feature a full thickness macular hole, in this case of stage 4 full thickness macular hole in the myopic eye with RPE drusen-like changes and cystic formation in both uh, edges of the hole. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this information useful in your daily clinical practice. Please stay tuned for the next presentation where I will discuss outer retinal tissue structure changes.